Math 110, Rational Functions, Section 4.5. A rational function is basically two polynomials being divided. My first polynomial is p of x, and my second polynomial is q of x. Now the domain of this is going to consist of all the inputs of x where q of x cannot equal 0. So here's some examples of what a rational function could look like, and here are the various elements of it. We have horizontal asymptotes. We have vertical asymptotes. Notice how the graph wants to hug these asymptotes. It's going to get super close to all of these different asymptotes as you're graphing these. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find all of those different pieces and then be able to put them all together at the very end. Now sometimes you don't have horizontal asymptotes. Instead, you're going to have what we call a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote. And this is an example of that. But notice that this function still ends up having a vertical asymptote. So the first thing we'll practice is trying to find that domain. Now by the definition, it said where the bottom polynomial can't equal 0. So I'm going to take this bottom part, x minus 3 and x plus 5, and I'm going to say that it can't equal 0. Solving for each one, I'm going to get x can't equal 3 and x can't equal negative 5. So I can express my domain two ways. I can say x is an element of all real numbers such that x cannot be 3 or negative 5. Or I can think of this in terms of interval notation. So if I put negative 5, if I put positive 3, we can't have those values, so they're going to be open circle. But there's no other exclusions, and so my graph is going to be everywhere else. So I can write it as interval notation by saying it's from negative infinity all the way to negative 5 union from negative 5 all the way to 3 union from 3 all the way to positive infinity. And this next example, if we're looking at just the domain, we're just focusing on the denominator. So once again, I'm going to say x times x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So setting each element equal to 0, I'm going to have x can't equal 0 and x can't equal 2. So my domain, I can express it, I can say x is an element of all real numbers such that x cannot be 0 or 2, or as interval notation to help us visualize it, I have an open circle at 0 and I have an open circle at 2. My graph is everywhere else. So what I can do is I can say that it's from negative infinity all the way to 0, union from 0 all the way to 2, union from 2 all the way to positive infinity. Now finding the vertical asymptotes is going to be very, very similar. In these past two slides, we saw two types of domain restrictions. The first, we just had the denominator equal to 0. And so we said, hey, we set them equal to 0. And so we solve for that. That is a type of domain restriction. Now, if you notice on this second example, these x's would cancel out. That is a, an, another type of domain restriction because I still have an element in the bottom here that if I set equal to 0, you know, I'm going to have an exclusion. Now, we're going to categorize those as two different things when we're trying to uh, graph these rational functions. The first are going to be the vertical asymptotes. Notice there's nothing that cancels out. It's just what I have on the denominator. So my vertical asymptotes are going to be the domain restrictions that don't include anything that cancels out. So if I were to find the domain again, x minus 3 times x plus 5, we say that that can equal 0. So we said that x can equal 3 and x can equal negative 5. Well, these right here are going to be my vertical asymptotes. 
So my vertical asymptotes are going to be the equations x equals 3 and x equals negative 5. And they're those lines that go straight up and down, those dotted lines that you saw in those previous slides. On this example here, notice that these x's cancel out. Now those x's canceling out, it's still a domain restriction, but it's a special type. We call it a hole. And we're going to have a hole at whatever the zero is of what canceled out. So since this domain restriction, we said x can't equal zero for that, I know I'm going to have a hole at zero. Now at, after everything cancels out, I still have 1 over x minus 2. Well, this is going to now be a vertical asymptote. And so I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. To take a look at another example of that, let's say if I had x plus 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 1. Those would cancel out. Well, I know that this domain, I know that if I were to try to find what my domain restriction was, it would be x can't equal negative 1 because if I plug in negative 1 I get a 0 and on the denominator and that's considered an undefined value. And so for this case I would say I had have a hole at x being negative 1. Then I still have my vertical asymptote. I have this in the denominator and so it's going to be x equals negative 2. So we just examined vertical asymptotes and holes. Now we're going to examine horizontal asymptotes. Now we're going to use these following rules when examining horizontal asymptotes. We're going to say n is the degree of the numerator. Now remember, the degree means the highest power in the polynomial. So the degree of the numerator is saying the highest power in the polynomial on top. And m is the degree of the denominator, so the highest power on the bottom. If the highest power on the bottom is larger than the highest power on the top, the horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals 0. If they are the same, the, the degrees, then it's the ratio of the leading coefficients. If the degree on top is larger than the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. We call it an oblique asymptote or slant asymptote, and you divide the polynomials to find it. So this first example here on number 5, the first thing I want to do is take a look at my n and m. So my n is 2 and my m is 3. So now comparing it to these, n is going to be less than m. So that's case 1. So because it's case 1, I know that the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. Next example. Looking at these powers, or the degrees here, the highest degree was 3, the highest degree here is 2. So comparing it to these, I know it's going to be case 3, where n is greater than m. So therefore, it's going to be an oblique asymptote. And I'm going to show you how we find that in a little bit. Example number 7. If we look at the degrees, that's 2 and that's 2. So therefore, I have to divide the leading coefficients. So 2 divided by 1 is going to give me 2. And so that's my horizontal asymptote, the equation y equals 2. So our first example here. I have the polynomial f of x equals 2x plus 3 divided by 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. I have to factor everything out to check to see if I have any holes. So factoring it, I have this 2x plus 3. This factors into uh, 3x minus 2 and x plus 3. It does not reduce. There's nothing reducing here, so I know I don't have any holes. The next step, I want to find the zeros. So to find the zeros, I set the top equal to 0 and solve. So I say 2x plus 3 equals 0, and then x equals negative 3 halves when I solve for x. Step 3, find my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So to find the vertical asymptotes, you set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. 
so I set these equal to zero and solve for it. And I got x equals two thirds and x equals negative three. My horizontal asymptote, we look at those three different cases, and this one, the degree on the bottom is larger than the top, so my horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals zero. Then I need to take this information here, my zero, and I need to take all of that and I need to plot it onto my graph. And I also took a few extra points and I plugged them in. And so these are those extra points. So breaking this down, my zero, negative three over two is right there. My vertical asymptotes, negative three, which is right there. And my horizontal asymptote, so the equation y equals zero is going to be right here. And so now um, I also picked extra values and I plugged those values in to kind of see where my graph is going to go. Notice the values that I picked are on all sides of my vertical asymptote. So I picked a value over here, I picked value between here, and I picked values on this side just to see what's going to happen. So now that I pick those values, I can check to see if my graph crosses my horizontal asymptote. Sometimes the graph is going to cross the horizontal asymptote. There are some exceptions where that occurs. Generally, as a rule, it doesn't, but there are exceptions, and so we have to find them. And so I take the 2x plus 3 divided by 3x squared plus 7x minus 6, set that equal to 0, and I solve for x. Now, the reason why I set it equal to zero is because zero is my horizontal asymptote. I set it equal to my horizontal asymptote because in the process of simplifying, if I get a value, I know that's where it's going to cross. Now, solving for this, if I were to multiply both sides by 3x squared plus 7x minus 6, it would cancel out with the bottom on this side, okay, because 3x squared plus 7x minus 6, it would cancel out there, and so I get 2x plus 3 equals 0. Now if I continue to solve for x, I get x equals negative 3 over 2. Now that happens to be the same value as my 0. And so as we can visualize, we know that it's crossing the horizontal asymptote there. Now that everything's plotted, I can kind of trace my graph. Now remember, the graph is going to follow along the asymptotes. So it follows the long asymptote here, follows the long the asymptotes here, follows the long the asymptotes here. And so these extra values that I picked help me determine that. So a recap of the steps. The first thing I did was I reduced the function to see if there are any holes there wasn't. Step two, I set the top equal to zero and solve. So I said two x plus three equals zero and I found what my zero is. Step three, find your vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So for the vertical asymptotes, you set the denominator equal to zero and solve for it. So I said three x minus two times x plus three and I set that equal to zero and I ended up with x equaling two thirds and negative three. My horizontal asymptote, we examined those three cases. In this case, n was smaller than m. Therefore, y equaled zero. Step four, plot the info and graph the extra points. So I took all these values here and I plotted extra points, right? I just, I just created my x, y table and I plotted those points. There are my vertical asymptotes and there's my horizontal asymptote. Took all that information and I posted it on there. Once you have that, then you can trace everything. Just remember, the graph loves to hug the asymptotes. Next example, the first step that I want to do is reduce the function and find any holes. So I factored the top completely and I factored the bottom completely. Now notice my x's cancel. So that means I'm going to have a hole at x equals zero. Now finding the zeros, I have to set the top equal to zero and solve. 
So I took the x plus 1 and the x minus 1, set that equal to 0, and I got a positive 1 and a negative 1. Step 3, I need to find the vertical asymptotes. And uh, to do the vertical asymptotes, I set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for it. So I said x plus 3 times x minus 2. Set that equal to 0, and so I got x equal 2 and x equals negative 3. My horizontal asymptotes, n equals m. So because my n equals m, I divide the coefficients, 1 over 1, and so I get the equation y equals 1. So now I'm going to plot my horizontal asymptote, my vertical asymptote, my zeros, and the whole, including a few other points, and I'm going to post it on the graph. So there's my horizontal asymptote. Here are my vertical asymptotes. These blue ones are my extra values that I got from here. Now notice this hole. This hole, if I plug zero into the original, it gave me an undefined value. That's how I know it's a hole. It's an error, right? It's zero over zero. But once I reduced it, if I plugged zero into there, I got 0.1667. So I knew where to place my hole on the graph. And then here are my zeros, positive one and negative one. So now that I have that, I need to check to see, does my graph cross the horizontal axis? So I take my function and I set that equal to one. Why did I set it equal to one? Because that was my uh, uh, horizontal asymptote. And I used one of the reduced versions. Okay, So I used the reduced version, because you can. Why not? And so multiplied both sides by x squared minus or plus x minus 6. Solving for x and getting it by itself, the x squareds cancel out. And so solving for x, you're going to get x equals 5. And so I know at 5 right here, I know that's where it's going to cross the horizontal asymptote. And so now that I have all that information, I can draw my graph. Draw it hugging the asymptote. Draw it hugging the asymptote draw it hugging the asymptote and then it still hugs it but it crosses here just a little bit now we're gonna look at an oblique asymptote so you still do this basic stuff in the beginning see if it reduces it doesn't factor so therefore nothing reduces then finding my zeros I set the top equal to zero and so I get x equals zero now trying to find my vertical asymptote, if I set the bottom equal to zero and I solve for it, I get x equals i and negative i. Because I got imaginary values for x, there is no vertical asymptote. Looking at my three cases for my horizontal asymptote, the degree on top is larger than the bottom. Therefore, it's going to be an oblique asymptote. So what I need to do is I need to divide the polynomials. So I said, x squared plus 1 goes into 2x to the third power. Now the reason why I divide it is I want to get an equation. This value that I get on top, this expression here, this is going to be the equation that I use for my asymptote. Any remainder that you get is completely irrelevant. You don't need it because you're thinking in terms of as it goes to infinity, it's just going to be a super small insignificant number. So my oblique asymptote is going to be the equation y equals 2x. So now I want to take that information and a few extra points and plot it. So here's that oblique asymptote or the slant asymptote y equals 2x. Here are those extra values that I plugged in. Here's that zero that I found. And so now I want to see does it cross the axis? So solving for this, I just said 2x to the third power divided by x squared plus 1 equals 2x. Now in the process of solving for x here, you're going to get x equals 0. We already know it crosses there because that's where my 0 is. Just visually, you can tell that it's going to cross the slant asymptote. So now I can draw my sketch. It's a little rough here, but this sketch right here, hugging the asymptotes, that's going to be the representation of my graph. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment.